This is Rudy Rodriguez Shomad, and I'm here with Nick Taylor. We have some exciting news to announce. We have a partnership now with Bet99, and we are now launching a special show, separate of Come On Now, the podcast. We're introducing to you tonight, Come On CFL. This is our CFL show. Nick played in the CFL for seven years. Somehow, four good teams wanted him, and he won three Grey Cups in that time. It's pretty freaking impressive. I obviously have to mess with him, but Nick won three Grey Cups, one with Ottawa, two with Winnipeg, one that he says he should have won, should have been four, but he blown his, blew his Achilles. But that said, we present to you Come On CFL, presented by Bet99. Talk about this, Nick. This is an exciting time for us to unleash a separate show featuring yep. you. Yep. Because you are the one that played for seven years in the CFL. Would have been eight without the COVID year. Yep. Um, but let's talk about it. You know, this is all things CFL. Um, I was looking at the standings right now, and you got a couple of – you have a 4 and zero Montreal. Aren't they the defending champs? The defending champs. Darn champions. Oh, yeah. And we got Saskatchewan who's three and oh. Did you expect that? Yes, I, I kinda did, man. I, I, I knew that they were gonna have a, a different team, different perspective this year, coming in with a new head coach. Um they changed a lot of their players, they brought in some players, they got their quarterback back, who's one of the highest completing I mean completing quarterback or completion percentage quarterbacks in the league to ever play in the CFL. They got him back. He got his he, he tore up his knee early in the season last year, and now he's back. He's healthy, but now he's unhealthy again. So I had them as one of my top teams. I knew the new coach was going to come in and, and implant his 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 whole nature on the team and the organization. They added a old lineman from Winnipeg, who I know personally as a dog. And he is going to get everybody riled up. He's going to get everybody ready to play. And everybody's going to follow his energy because he brings the energy every day, Yoshi Hardwick. So they brought those type of players into that team, changed the organization. They they they, they don't commit the, the flags that they did before. They did early in the season, but they started to tone that down. But they have enough talent to get by right now. So I expected that out of Sass this year. Who is the quarterback that's healthy, Trevor, hurt, now hurt? <laughs> Trevor Harris, man. I played with him, man. He was the backup quarterback the year we won the championship in Ottawa. Um, and Henry Burris was the quarterback. But Trevor took over that year for a few games while while Henry Burris was out. He came in tremendously, stepped up, you know, and kept the ship afloat. And then after that, he became the man because Henry retired. And he was the man in Ottawa, led them to the championship one year. Matter of fact, two years. I think they lost. They lost one or two. I'm not sure. They lost both? No, they lost one. They lost one. They got close a couple of times. And, you know, he was just a good quarterback. He left there, went to Edmonton. I was with him in Edmonton for a year. Um, and then he left there, and then he ended up going to SAS. Um, he's been getting a highly paid quarterback. But injury, injury bug as he get older, um, it's hard to run away from it. I forgot to do something. This is new, so I apologize. Yes, sir. Remember, we are partners with Bet99. Our code is COMEON99. It's all capital letters. So be sure to jump on Bet99. Our, again, our code is COMEON99, all capital letters. The links are in the description of this video and the bio on uh, Instagram. So please support it and get on Bet99. Remember to please play responsibly. Now we can move on to the next part because yes, that's sir. what I get used to saying. Uh, please play responsibly. Ooh. So, yes, um, we're also watching basketball now, I think, both of us. and uh, But, yeah. <laughs> Leave Anyhow, Caitlin Clark alone for one day, Rudy. Leave yeah, Caitlin one, Clark for, alone for, for, for one, one day. For one, for one day. She has seven assists, I think, at halftime. Okay. Um, so, but we got to talk about your Winnipeg Blue Bombers, who you predicted to be in the Grey Cup. Yeah. They are not faring too well. They are now 0-4, but, of course, you have defended them and said they are a competitive 0-4. Talk they about They are a competitive 0-4, man. Um, a play here and there go their way. They're 2-2. Two two. The first game they came out in um, Winnipeg, they played Montreal, which was kind of disrespectful. They're the defending champions. They should be playing the first game of the season. Should be in Montreal. 
they took that to the damn to the damn bay. They didn't care about nothing. They came out there and they smacked Winnipeg. The game was a little closer than it than it looked. Um, Luis Castillo, the kicker. He, I mean Sergio. Oh, Luis Castillo. Sergio Castillo. He missed two kicks. Um, and an extra point. Um, that would kept became a little closer before they had a flea flicker that scored for a touchdown at the end of the game to Tyson Philpott, who's handed, having a freaking tremendous year. Canadian receiver. Um, you know, usually Canadian receivers, you know, at one point in time in this league, was somebody you just throw out there on the field just for a ratio breaker because you have to have a certain amount of Canadians on the field. So you throw him out there on the far wide side and you just tell him to just do a three yard route, sit down. And if nobody guards you, we might throw it to you, catch the ball, fall for it for five, six, seven yards. But these Canadian receivers this year, the last couple of years, have been turning it up, man. Tyson Philpot is killing the league. He's going over 100 yards every game. That's darn near his average right now. Um, and he's been tremendous, man. And um, that game, Winnipeg came out there, and they just got outright smacked in the mouth. I think the game was closer than it was, but no, Montreal defense has just been tremendous. Um they have been giving Zach Caleros the MOP of this league for maybe three times back to back. Didn't win it last year. They have been, give, have been giving him hell every time he played. Their defensive coordinator, Thorpe, Noel Thorpe, has just been um, – his blitzes is just gets to that, that offense, man, and it gets to Zach Caleros, and he just can't seem to figure it out right now. But that's how that first game went. It went bad. Winnipeg came out. Lay the egg, and they usually don't do that at home. They won over 90% of their games at home over the last three, four years. They only lost two games. One game I, I was a part of, we played against Montreal, and last year they got smacked against BC. So I thought Winnipeg came out, they were a little bit banged up early in the season. They lost a couple players, and then they lost a couple players to um, free agency. They lost Yoshi Hardwick, went to SAS, and they lost Jackson Jeffcoat. He retired. He's one of the better D linemen in the league the past five, six years. He made everything easier for Willie Jefferson, who gets all the praise and adulation in this league as one of the top defenders. So when they lost these key players in free agency, um, I think because the money was mismanaged a little bit, they paid some players a little bit more than they than they should have, and they didn't keep the core guys who were the heart and soul of that. O-line and D-line together, and that led to the situation that they're in now. It's not about all about the talent. It's just about some of the, 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 the things that those vet players did for the locker room. That's the reason they're losing games by two and three points and not winning those games that they used to win. So that's been a big thing for them. Um, and then Zach has just been on a slow start. He got hurt, and now they bring back Chris Strebler, who was a great cup hero in 19, or was a part of it. You know, he was the backup quarterback, but Jason, we used to bring him in and he used to run the ball um, and do our quarterback sneaks and trick plays. And he was just like a fullback that played quarterback. Not the best thrower, but he's a – think of Tim Tebow. He's Tim Tebow in the CFL. Not very accurate, but when it's game on the line, when you need him to make a play, he makes a play. And that's what he was for us, but Zach Caleros came in, stepped up and took over. But now he's back to being a starting quarterback because Zach is out. Don't know how long Zach is out for. I'm hearing little things, you know, from sources that Zach might be out maybe a game or so, just being precautionary. Um, but Chris Trevler has to step up this week. They need a win. They play in Ottawa. They go – they play at home. They lost two games at home this year. They lost two games at home the last four years, Rudy. So they have to get back on track. They need to win this game. They have a lot of injuries. Dalton's shown the receiver, the top receiver in the league the past couple of years. He's out. Um, Kenny Lawler, the best receiver in the league, he's out for on the sixth game. They have a lot of injuries that they're trying to overcome, but they better get it done now. They got to get the running game going. Um, he's struggling on with a lot of RPOs. Um, some easy throws he has to make, the layups. He can, He has to make the layups. The easy throws, the, the under routes, the, the, the out routes, the, the curls, he has to make those throws. And he he came in last game and he weren't make, wasn't making those throws, but he has to make it this week. Um, so, so they'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. At the end of the day, they'll figure it out. You mentioned running game. Now, people don't really run the ball that much in the CFL, it seems, because of, you know, for them, if there's American viewers out there, there's only three downs. Yep. Um, 
how do you establish a running attack in the CFL? So well, those are the, the people best, that don't the, know. The best teams, they do run the ball, Rudy. They probably run the ball about 40% of the time. It's, that's the sort of balance you want to have. 60 to 40, 55, 45. You, you know, you want to get – so usually your running backs average about five yards a carry, 5.1, 5.5. That means you have a really good running back. You should be getting five yards a carry. So you want to move the line of scrimmage. Um, they, the, the defense starts a yard off. So you kind of got a little advantage on that side of it, you know, coming from the off, offense perspective because the D-line is already a yard off. You move them a couple yards, you're running back for all four, you get five yards, and now you're at second and five situations. Or even, you know, second and seven situations, you still can run the ball because you get five, six yards. On third and one in the CFL, you go for it every time. Your quarterback sneak it is darn near 95%, 98% chance that you're going to get it. So basically in the CFL, you want to get to third and one. You know, you want to get short, you know, manageable situations. And that's what the running game is for. You want to establish that the teams that usually win, they usually get into the second and three, the second and five um, situations. And that's usually the best teams that, you know, that come out of here and, you know, have good records. And that's usually how it goes. So that's how you want to establish the run game. The t- Winnipeg has been doing that for the past four or five years, whether it's Brady Oliveira or Hall of Famer Andrew Harris. And that's what led to, you know, a lot of the championships because they run the RPO so damn well, even though their quarterback doesn't run the ball well, because you have to respect their run game. And they had two of the best old linemen at tech, left tackle and right tackle. And, and, and they pound you, pound you, pound you, and they falling forward. They, they, they're they're nasty. Yoshi's going to jump, push the pile. He's going to hop on players. He's going to slam them. And, and it's all fair and, and, and love and football, man. And, and, and that's what was good about Winnipeg. They were just, you know, bullies up front. And then the running backs, they made sure that they were bullies also. So tell me about – I'm looking at the numbers here. Yep. The number, Go ahead. One, number one quarterback right now is Vernon Adams Jr. Yep. You they're, might have heard of him. They're three and one. Yep. Um, but how the hell do you have Bo Levi Mitchell with almost 1,300 yards passing, second in the league, and they're 0 and 4? And then next to him, <laughs> McLeod Bethel Thompson. That name, that name rings a bell to me. I don't know why. Um, 1,225 yards. And they're, so two of the top three quarterbacks, yep. they're 0 and 4. How does that oh. happen in the CFL? Because if you, you know, I mean, come on, like in the NFL, if you're uh, one of the top two of the top three quarterbacks, you typically have a win. Yeah, I mean, so, win. so sometimes those numbers are padded because you're down and you have to throw your way back in the game. You're throwing the ball, throwing the ball. Oh, you so, mean Ryan? You mean Ryan Tannehill's entire career with the Dolphins now to us? Okay. That, yeah, I, something I like that. You know, Dak Prescott, they're down. You know, thirty to eight, and you and you bring your team back. You got to throw the ball. You know, more and more now. But when it comes to these two quarterback situation, um, you're dealing – so CFL is a three-phase game. Defense, offense, and special teams is a big part. And it's about flipping the field, being in good field position. The shorter the field you go, the better for your offense. You don't want to go long fields in the CFL. It's literally almost – Darn near impossible to do. You're going 110 yards up the field. You don't want to be in those situations. You want to flip the field. You want to get good field position, return game. And you don't want to have penalties. That's how you win the game in the CFL. So these quarterbacks are going long field, and you end up with field goals, but you get a lot of yards. So that's happening a lot of these times with these quarterbacks. And Edmonton, Edmonton, Lord have mercy, this team here, man, they just find a way to just shoot themselves in the foot every freaking time. Um, Chris Jones came over here and he was supposed to turn it around. He's known for defense. And this has been one of the most brutal looking defenses in the league the past three, four years he's been coaching that team. And so they have to make up for that. And this team is just damn right, darn near just just not the smartest team. They they commit the worst penalties at the worst times. They throw interceptions at the worst times. So they always are playing from behind and have to catch up. And when you do that, it's just not setting yourself up for success. And Edmonton is one of those teams that just can't get right. They just don't figure out a way to lose every time. So last year was their problem was, you know, their quarterback, their starting quarterback at the time just was not good. So they bring in this young kid, Trey Ford, a Canadian, who is like Michael Vick of 
the CFL. Michael Vick with Lamar Jackson. He can throw the ball deep, just can't read the field so well. But when he came in, they started off 0-9. They threw him in as a starter, and they finished the season like 4-5. and But the thing was, they paying these high-paid receivers over there, and he can't throw the ball really well to them. He's running a whole bunch of RPOs, and his, most of his plays is, you know, no DN, no D lineman can catch up to him. He's scrambling. He's breaking the pocket, and then he's making these damn amazing plays. And then they come in the all season, and then they go back and get McLeod Bethel from the USFL. He comes back to the league. They give him big money, and they put the kid on the bench. But when the kid was out there, their run game went to number one. They went from the worst in the league in running to the best in the league in running, and they used to hand the ball to the running back, Kevin Brown. And he's having the time of his life with this quarterback because the DNs the, the can't crash down. The DNs don't know where to go. The linebacker is coming up. But there's an RPO. It's a pull. It's a, it's, it's, it's a run on, or he's holding the ball. Like, they don't know what's going on. So that running back had the time of his life. This year, that running back is getting about seven carries a game because Edmonton feel they got the quarterback who could throw the ball, stretch the field, and they have a highest-paid receiver in the league. They got another receiver. And that receiver, Eugene Wilson, has not been having a good year. He's catching 50% of his passes. He's getting a lot of targets, 50% of the passes. For Edmonton to be successful, him and McLeod Bethel has to get on time and on page and get things going. Your pan has got $300,000. You have another receiver, Curly Gittins, that they traded. They traded their D lineman for because I think they had enough receivers, enough weapons at receiver. They trade. They trade their best D lineman who gets 10 sacks a year, Jake Ceresna. They trade him to Toronto, and they bring in more offense with the with the quarterback. So they say, we got four good receivers out here. We're going to air it out. They need balance. Hand the ball off to your running back, who is that guy. He's getting six, seven carries. I know he's rolling over in his Trey Ford grave right now because he misses that guy creating some of the holes and havocs that he created for him. He was running – you know, because of the, the the pressure that Trey Ford was putting on DNs and defensive coordinators, when he handed the ball off to, to Kevin Brown, he wasn't getting touched till seven yards off the field when he got in the game. So now they changed to a quarterback who's throwing the ball every down because they got all these receivers, and it's just not flowing the way they thought it was going to flow. They're on four. Um, they lost a couple close games. Could have went their way, but they're just not smart. They find a way to turn the ball over in situations. McLeod Bethel, even though – He's a good thrower of the football. He's not completing a big-time throw. They have situations where receivers are open for touchdown, and he's missing them by a yard or two, three yards, and those are coming back to bite them in the ass every dang time, and they get critical penalties, face mask penalty in the last drive. They get a rough in them. They're, they're just not smart, and they've been like that since Chris Jones got there. Um, so he's going to be on the hot seat, man. Edmonton Elks, he will be on the I hot mean, seat. They, they've lost three games by three points, and they've lost one game by eight points. So well, one of the games – They're a competitive 0-4. No, one of the games, <laughs> they were down like 10 at the end of the game, and they scored one touchdown in mop-up time with like five seconds left. The game was over, so that you was against Montreal. You, you can't kick an outside kick in the CFL? You can't. With five seconds, what are you going to do? Throw a Hail Mary after that. If you yeah, get well, it. Well, the, the onside Maybe. kick takes about three, four, five seconds, so <laughs> – uh, so are there any – I mean, last week you had uh, anything about last week's games that stood out to you? We have uh, BC beat Edmonton 24-21, Montreal beat to Toronto. Yep. I guess it was, that was a rematch of the championship so, last year, 30-20, to correct? The Which game? Toronto, Toronto was in the championship against no, Montreal. No, no, no. Winnipeg, no. Winnipeg versus Montreal. Winnipeg, Montreal. Okay, Toronto right. was the hottest team in the league last wait, wait, year. Mont Montreal – Toronto was the team – okay, who had Chad Kelly? Toronto. Toronto, okay, my business. The MOP. I apologize, folks. I am an American, and I am learning and I'm more. I'm explaining it to CFL. Rudy. Rudy will figure it out. He'll know, you know what he's CFL. talking about in a couple of weeks. Because it's a little hard to watch this stuff down here, but outside of watching it on my computer because it's not on television. Well, it's um, on CBS Sports also. <clears throat> I've searched. It's like the, no, no, so a, I'll let you know. When it's on CBS yeah. Sports, it's easy to find. So we have Mar Montreal beat Toronto 30-20. to 20. Mm -hmm. Calgary beat Winnipeg 22-19, and Ottawa beat Hamilton 24-22. Yep. Anything special about any of these games that stood out to you? Oh, man. So I just went over the Edmonton game and the BC game, and Edmonton kind of blew the game at the end. They took the lead, um, and then they just blew it. They had penalties. You know, they have situations where, 
you know, in the last two minutes of the half, if you get a, a time count violation, I mean, a delay a game, really, because you get 20 seconds in the CFL to get your playoff, you lose the down. So they lost the down in one situation where they're kind of in field goal range, or they could get in field goal range, and they blow opportunity to get points. And then Vernon Adams has just been so damn special, man. So damn special. The growth of this kid has been amazing to see, man. Because when he first came in, he was a quarterback with small in stature, and he was known just to run the ball. The last couple of years, this man has been threading needles, finding all his receivers, his top receivers, Alexander Hollins, over, you know, 1,000 yards last year. He had four receivers over, I think, four receivers over 1,000 yards last year, or three. But they were, like, big time because of Vernon Adams' ability to throw the ball. But this year, they add William Stan back from Montreal. And that's the thing that could put BC over the top. Right now, Vernon Adams could throw the ball as much as he wants to. But when it comes down to cold time and you need to get big yards in, in you know, in November and, and October, William Stanback will be a 235-pound running back who's going to fall forward. And that's been BC problem the past couple of years of going against Winnipeg in Winnipeg. They probably won't have to do that this year the way it's looking. They look like they might have a chance to play in BC in their dome and not have to go in the cold. And, you know, when they need to, unless they, you know, let Sass keep doing what they do. Um, but they have William Stan back to hand the ball to, and that would be a big difference for them out of getting to the championship, but not this year. But Vernon Adams has been tremendous. He led the team to a game-winning drive at the end. Um, get it to his kicker, Sean White. He knocks it down. He's automatic. Um, so that was a good game to see, man. That was an amazing game. Shout out to Vernon Adams. He's been balling. He's throwing for darn near 400. 350 yards a game. Um, they air it out over there, man. He has some receivers over there. McGinnis, who's turning the corner, Canadian receiver at that. And it's just been great to see. Um, the Ottawa game, Hamilton game, comes down to the end. Hamilton scores the ball. They have a chance. They're up one. They have a chance to go up two, to go up three by going getting a two-point conversion. Bo Levi Mitchell misses the, the underneath receiver. He tries to throw to his guy. Um, white in the end zone, they don't get the two-point conversion. They come back. It's 20 seconds left in the game. Rudy, do you squib the ball with 20 seconds, or do you kick the ball deep? Well, in – what? As a, I mean, it depends. So, so they, they need a field goal. It's, it depends. It's, I mean, I don't, someone, someone I, don't, t- I don't trust – I don't trust – I mean – You can't trust squib I kicks. I don't trust squib kicks. So – because literally, find, you, go ahead, you go make, ahead. I've never trusted. Like I remember when they got all people got all crazed about um, Sean McDermott. No, no, the, the, whoever the coach, who the hell is the coach at Buffalo? Buffalo Bills. McDermott. McDermott. Okay, Sean McDermott and him not kick, squib kicking against the Chiefs in the conference. Sem, was the divisional playoff or was it the mm-hmm. AFC yeah. Championship when that happened? Whichever game that was, when they when the Chiefs ended up winning in over in, in overtime because forty two thirty six because they didn't they said they didn't squib kick it yeah or I mean I think it's a situational thing but I don't trust squib kicks because you make a mistake and next thing you know, next thing you know the ball's at the fifty yard line so uh, or it's in it's in a it's in a much more manageable situation whereas I would rather you kick it I, I would rather you just kick it deep. So, trying not to kick it through the back of the end zone in the NFL. Yeah, so that's the difference you know, between that's and in, in, in the CFL it's different. Where because if you stand in the end zone, you get, you lose a point, right? Yeah. So it's a point. if you stay in the end zone, you lose a point. So at this yeah. point, uh, you know that can't happen. You know yeah. Hamilton actually wants they well they can't kick it in there and they could take the point and they could start they off could. in a better field position. Yeah. So, but most of the times you're going to bring the ball out. You know. But you usually don't. What does, get, what does it get? What does it get brought out to? The twenty-five or the thirty or the thirty-five? Um, the forty. Four. Okay. Yes. So you're literally twenty yards away from twenty-five yards away from being in a this, good they lost, they, lost, they lost this game by two. So, but you don't and, want to give a bad point because then your field goal doesn't win the game. It, t- it ties the game. So yes. Yeah, well, so, okay. Who was who was who blew the so Hamilton, Hamilton blew the game? Hamilton is winning by okay. a point. Twenty-two to twenty-one. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, if yeah, they you get, could, you could they get the point, down. they'll get the point. But okay. you literally put them in great field position. Yeah. But if you kick the ball deep, it's usually going to land around the 15, 10 anyway. 
It's not going to go mm-hmm. to the end zone more than likely. Mm-hmm. They squib it, but when you squib the ball, you're putting yourself at risk. Anybody could pick the ball. It might go to the person on the front line, the and second line, and now they're at the 45. He, he runs yep. the ball 10 more yards. They're at, the, they're at the fucking 54, you know. They're almost mm-hmm. there 10 yards, 15 yards away. So they got the ball. Their returner gets the ball. He gets, a, he gets it at, like, the 25. He gets yeah. a nice return to, like, the 45. They're 20 yards away. With so how much come, time? So, so after that one, it's like 15 seconds, whatever or not. So they Time got out. They, yes, they do a couple plays. It gets to third and one, Rudy. And they need about five yards for a field goal. Uh-huh. To get in great field goal range. Maybe six, seven yards, whatever. Hamilton goes cover zero. And this is where they make a mistake. They're their nickel, their nickel defender, he – so you're coming zero. You shouldn't back up. First of all, there's five seconds left. So if you get beat, you better get beat deep, and then you make the tackle because, you know, the clock's going to run out. You don't let them run a three – you don't let them run a five-yard route. You don't let them get the five yards. You have to come up. You don't move. You're in cover zero. You don't move. The DB moves back two, three yards and gets to do the easy pitch and catch for, for seven, eight yards. Field goal range. Hit the but, field goal. They walk off the field. But that's, so that's kind of like that's kind of like what the Chiefs did. I mean, the Bills they, did versus the Chiefs. Yeah, but you're in cover they just, zero. They just, let these, they just let them go right down the field with these well, wide open passes. Well, Hamilton, Hamilton runs a cover zero. They don't just sit back well, in the zone. They run well, a cover zero. But you, you need to be jamming the DB, the road oh, receiver. Third. Third and one. Well, even if you don't jam it, you don't move. You sit at you seven yards. You can't be seven. You can't be ten. How far back did they go? So they're probably like seven yards, but you don't move back because you come. You get in a waggle. You got to give them a little respect, but you don't move. You 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 have ice cold veins. You sit there. You sit in your damn rocking chair, and you're waiting for him to run an out route, a slant route. Especially if they don't run an extra protection, you know the ball got to come out hot. If the ball doesn't come out hot, the quarterback's going to get sacked because you're sending more than they can handle. But you gotta read. You gotta be. You gotta read the situation. You have to look in there. You have to be confident enough to know that what's going on and see every scenario that's gonna happen. Did they set an extra person to to, to to bomber? That's what they call a bomber. The receiver don't go out. He come in. He come in and he he's an extra blocker. Do they send that? That means the quarterback gonna have extra time. You might need to get in your back pedal. They probably gonna throw a deep ball. They didn't do that. That means the ball's coming out hot. That means you don't freaking move. You just wait for that receiver to run a slant, a hitch, or out, and you break on it. The DB backs up, gives us an easy pitch and catch. They kick the field goal. They run off the field. The Ottawa's 2-1. and one. Their quarterback, Drew Brown, who's the former quarterback of Winnipeg, he got his team rolling. Ottawa looked good this year, um, except for the one game they had against Montreal. Montreal is just punching everybody in the mouth this year because their defense has just been so tremendous. I think they're on like a nine-game winning streak from last year, Great Cup in the playoffs, until the four games they won this year. So they've been tremendous. Cody Fajardo, I want to give a – Huge shout out to this quarterback. He was known as a quarterback that couldn't get it done in SAS. Um, played against us a couple of times in the in the in the Western Finals, and we beat him every time. Um, they just couldn't get the big play. I made a, a breakup on one play. Another year, I was going to make another breakup to win the game, um, and it hit the goalpost. And then, so they just couldn't get over the hump. That was the game that y'all stopped in like the two yard line or something like that. Yeah, that was another. That was the first year, nineteen, two thousand nineteen. Yeah, I so remember we stopped that. Him a couple I remember, times. I remember, I remember the ball hit the goal, put the goal post. Yeah, so they weren't going to catch it anyway. <laughs> no, hey, Sass fans, sorry, I was right there. I was going to break it up anyway. I was there. Um, but <laughs> so the next, the following year, they start falling off. Cody's getting sacked. They are talking crap about him. The whole you know city's talking about him. He's not a good player. He leaves there, kind of get thrown away like damn, you know, old pair of shoes. He goes to Montreal. Montreal is predicted to go to be the worst team last year. He goes there. They get a new coach, um, Jason Moss. He goes there also. He was the um, he was the offensive coordinator of Cody Fajardo. So he goes there. He brings Cody with him. I don't even think he wanted to bring him there. It was just like, well, we got nothing else. We'll bring him here. They turn it around. Cody, they win the game. He throws a, a big play against Winnipeg in that game. Um, they score a touchdown to win it. And then since that moment, he's just been like, you know when you get that monkey off your back? 
and then mm-hmm. everything is so freely. You're playing. He's been playing playing freely this year, this year. Damn near eighty percent throwing the ball. He's ducking and dodging, spinning out of sacks. He's just out there playing like he's just free. You know, he don't care about nothing anymore. He got the championship. Um, his co- coach has confidence in him. His team has confidence in him. He has these receivers who are making plays after the catch. And his coach, Jason Moss, has just been calling tremendous freaking plays. Like, game plan has been amazing. And they just he's looked like a totally different player than what I knew about him. Like, we had different game plans for him. Like, make him beat us throwing. But now he's actually beating teams throwing the ball. And combine it with his ability to run every now and then when he needs to, Man, shout out Cody for Jordan, man. It's been it's been great to see your, you know, how your growth as a quarterback um from my end, my perspective being on the opposite end. I always thought you were a solid quarterback. I know other people thought that you were not good. Just simply put. And I said, you know, he can play ball. I've seen him make some plays, get out of some situations, and give us hell. And he you have been proving it. Kudos to you. Keep balling, man. Montreal, I love what y'all are doing. Um, y'all are playing phenomenal. Jason Moss, the head coach, um, even though you cut me, um, I, I, I'm going to give you kudos also, man, because you seem like you found the recipe and, and your team has been playing awesome, man. Uh, we'll see if y'all get it done at the end of the year. But it's been good to see y'all turn it around over there in Montreal from what it was, um, being a dumpster can before you get in, getting that job. And now y'all are a formidable, top-notch powerhouse team. Um, other games we had so last week. Oh, my was, bad. We also okay. had Go we ahead. also had Winnipeg versus Calgary came down to the end. Um, Chris Drebler come in the game for 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 um for my guy Caleros. Caleros get hurt. Um, he leads them to a game tying drive at the end of the game. He had that Tebow factor after looking terrible the first. You know, the quarter that he was in, the third quarter he was in. And he leads them to the tying, you know, to, to tie the game. They go to overtime. And he throws an interception to Demario Spoon Houston, the former Winnipeg DB that they lost out on last year. He led the league in interceptions nine years. And he ends the game with an interception. Calgary come back, kick the field goal in overtime because both teams get a chance to score on offense like college. Demario intercepts the ball in the cover zero. Strebler throws it off his back foot. Don't get no mustard on it. Demario, like a thief in the night. He will be a he will be our first podcast guest. Actually, guys, Monday we'll have Demario Houston on the show. Um, he gets the pick. They get the field goal. Do, do, do you have any dirt on him? Of course. That, <laughs> that's my, that's we, my, we need some. We need some stories. From this that's one. my. That's my young bull man. He came up under me. Um, I kind of guided him. I call him my son. Um. I call him my little son. I say I have two sons. I have Nico and I have Demario Houston. Uh, so that's my boy. He'll be on here. Uh, we'll see how they do this week. So he's leading the league in interceptions this year at two right now. Um, so he wins the game against his old team after they didn't, you know, they didn't sign him back. They didn't think that they, you know, they didn't have an offer, they didn't have enough money, or they didn't offer him enough that, you know, or they didn't see, make him valuable enough to keep him. And after he led the league in interceptions last year, you'll think that you will bring that guy back. He's a ball hawk. He gets to play. They win the game. So he gets his redemption against his old team. I didn't get it. I was a couple plays away. Um, we had the game. I didn't get my redemption against Winnipeg um, last year in Calgary, but he did. So I'm happy for him. The other game we had was Toronto and Montreal. Ta- Montreal just smacked them, just punched them in the mouth like they've been doing every year. The, the quarterback who's been playing great the whole year, um, the backup come in. Um, the coach. Den Whittle has been calling the plays magnific- magnificent for him. He's been running the ball well, RPO, keeping him in good situation not to have to do too much. They have the best, well, the smoothest running back in the league, um, Kadeem Carey, who left Calgary last year. And he's just smooth, man, like Barry Sanders smooth. Like he takes his time and he hits the hole. He don't run you over. He doesn't shake you. He just knows how to run the football. And that's what they've been doing most of the year until they ran into Montreal, who just kind of put a Nell and that coffin. So those were the games of last week. And um, it was a good so, game. Man. All games came down to the end except for that one game, that Toronto-Montreal game. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into uh, your power rankings. And we're going to go from nine to one. 
All right. So I already know that you're not going to have one team at nine because you're too biased. So give me your nine to one power ranking as of this past week. All right. So this is Nick power rankings, man. Is it a little biased? No, I'm objective people. I don't have any bias. I, I might know a little bit more than the, the casual fan, but so, and I, and I have that, you know, perspective of being on different teams and knowing different coaches you know, and being in different locker rooms and know what teams, you know, what certain players bring to certain teams. So that's how my power rankings are combined with how teams are playing this year. You know, I look at the whole picture. So at number nine is Hamilton Tiger Cats. Um, they're just not good. They're just not good. Um, Bo Levi Mitchell has been, he still could sling the ball. Um, sometimes he misses some throws that he should be making or his receivers is, you know, not bailing him out and making the plays when he do make the great throws. Like he, the first couple of weeks he was making amazing throws. And last game he played pretty well. Um, he had the one so-so game against Sass, but he's been pretty good. Um, but his top receiver hasn't been a top receiver until last game. And they paid him a lot of money to come back and be the top guy. And he's been letting Bo down. So they're at nine. I'm not a good team. At number eight, they could have been a tie. They could have been fighting for the bottom is the Edmonton Elks. Um, they're just not smart. They play the game in the most boneheaded way possible. It starts at the top. It starts with the head coach. It's his philosophy, how he brings the team, how he runs the team. It triggers down to the players. And if you don't have your team in line and you're doing, you know, then and you're doing your own thing or you, you don't put your foot down, then that's what you're going to have. You're going to have teams just running – running around, running crazy, not playing smart. You bring all these young players. You don't really have veterans. You know, you're not really, you know, bringing in players because of their, you know, their smarts. It's just about, oh, you're 6'3", and you run a 4'4". Four, four. Let's put you at the end. You know, that's, don't get it cut. You have to have a, a real game plan on how to be a, a coach and, and, and running your organization the way it should be. Man. At number seven is the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. They're on four. I can't put them no higher than that, but I know – the, most of the games been close. They've been a, a, a out route that Zach was a little late on against Ottawa from beating Ottawa. Um, they were um, they were in it against the, one of the best teams, BC. They ha they had the lead. They played a little bit of soft defense. BC come back and win that game. Um, Zach misses a big throw to Nick Dembski, and they could have been easily two and two right now. Um, they lost another game to oh to Calgary, which. They could have scored in overtime and got seven points, but the receiver got tackled. They got an interception. Well, they're at seven. Um, they got a lot of injuries. They got to get Kenny back. They got to get what well, Dalton's out look like for the year. Um, and they got to get all these players back to help out, you know. And they got to get Zach, their quarterback, back healthy. And they got to run the ball with Brady. He, he needs the ball 25 times a game. Right now, got to be heavy RPO. Y'all got to get a little bit, you know, more – aggressive with the run game and go from there. I don't like their O-line play, especially the inside, the guards, not feeling the jobs they've been doing, but I trust in them. I know the organization. I know the coaches. I know their mentality. They don't. Oh, will you, will you quit the blow job? Jesus Christ, man. Okay. I'm sorry, right. folks. This is what I knew was going to happen. I have to jump in here. Okay. I'm sorry. No other right. 0 4 team got this complete blow job here. Edmonton's lost three games by three points. No, one of the games. Winnipeg here has gotten blown out in the season opener. And but, I remember because you told me I can't, they were on 27 and six or whatever it was. Well, I, well, like, well, Edmonton no, is brain dead. That, I'm not giving them, I'm not picking them higher. All right. Okay. Okay. Let's okay. The next one. Jeez. I'm done. Okay. They're not going to sign you. They're not going to sign you, Nick. Sorry. You, they, you retired. That's cool. That's fine. I'm okay with that. I got, I got my championship rings. All right. <laughs> At number six is the Ottawa Red Blacks. Um, they still got a little. They still got some more to prove. Um, I like what I'm seeing. The defense has been a lot better for the most part, except for when they played Montreal the other day. Um, they gave up a lot of big plays last year. They've been a little bit better this year, and they got a quarterback that I think is pretty good in Drew Brown. They have to get Dominique Rhymes going. Um, he's the big part of. He should be a big part of the offense. Um, he's a big receiver. He goes up and go get it. You literally throw it up to him. He makes plays, and they're not getting it out of him. 
So it's not looking so good on his home coming back to Ottawa where he first started out at. They have to get him going. Drew Brown, he said he's the best receiver that he's ever seen or that he had. And I know he played with Kenny Lawler last year, so I know that was cap. But if you feel that way about him, got to get him the ball. I knew he, I recognized that name, that, that that receiver's name. He played at Northwestern yes. in Miami. Yeah, he's down here. In yeah, that's, 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 that, that's why you brought him up. Because, I mean, you know, you got to give the guy love. From the, no, no, the no. 305. No, he, he, was considered, he was considered like a top receiver the I past mean, year. So. I'm messing with you. Last man. year he got hurt. You know, he had a couple plays against me one year. But that's neither here nor there. That was oh. <laughs> that was we're, not, we're not going to show that. You know, even though I don't care. I, I don't care. I, you know, as a DB, shit happens, guys. You get beat. I was there. He made a great plays. Shout out to Dominique. No one, no one, no one is having a problem, man. You get real sensitive, man. Damn. All right. At number you five. You get real sensitive about, oh, my God. Every DB gets beat. Deion Sanders got beat. Yeah. Okay. But I'm just saying, <laughs> those plays, how he beat me it was like a, a rug. Like, it was bad. It was uh, how he jumped over my neck and how he threw me out. One play. You're, he threw no, me. you're only, what is, how tall? He's 6'4". You're 5'9", dude. That was, the, the play was a cover zero, and I'm there, and he just literally threw me out the way like a rag doll. And the ref ain't call anything. They just let him come back, undercut the ball. The ball was short. But I look like I look like uh, you ever watch Fresh Prince when they when Uncle Phil throw Jazzy Jeff out the house. That was I look you, like man. one of those. That's what it looked like. I, <laughs> we're not gonna show this up there. Rudy, do not go and find that. Clip. I may have to look this crap up now. Don't you find that clip. Said, you should it's, never have said that. Yeah, whatever. I'm okay with it. Um, Calgary at number five. Um, Jake. Jake the Snake Mayor has been playing tremendous this year. He's been moving tremendously in the pocket, escaping sacks, throwing the ball on the run. Everything that we told him not to freaking do last year, he's doing it better this year. He was throwing the ball. He wasn't mobile. He was throwing it across his body. He was getting him in trouble last year. And this year, Jake looks freaking great. And if he's going to continue to play like that with the running style of Dietrich Mills back there, pounding with the defense, Playing the way they plan, the secondary looking a lot more cohesive. The D line stopping Winnipeg run game that was always Calgary problem last year and the start of this year's was against the run and they was tremendous against Winnipeg. Um, they had had Brady under freaking lockdown. At number four, Toronto. T Toronto and Calgary could have been interchangeable. Um, Toronto won, lost they to Montreal, the best team in the league. Um, they made the quarterback look like a young, inexperienced quarterback. Um, they should have ran the ball a lot more with Kadeem Carey, the most gifted running back in the league when it comes to vision and just being smooth. Give him the ball. That's how y'all got there. Let y'all D-line hustle and, and get after the quarterback and, and blitz the quarterback and pressure him and get some turnovers. Toronto at four. At number three, they had a bye week last week. It's the Sass. They're 3-0. and oh. um, They're at three, though. Because I have to take into consideration Trevor Harris being hurt. I don't know how serious it is right now. Let me put my ear to the league and see what I can find out and get some notes on this injury. But right now, he's out for a little bit. They're going to Shea Patterson. You know Shea Patterson, right? He used to play for Michigan. I do not. I'm sorry. He was before, he was before your quarterback, man. Before I just the... found that video. Oh, boy. <laughs> He was before your quarterback that um that just got drafted. Shea Patterson, he's gonna. Oh, you mean team. he? He mean he was a good one. Okay. Yeah, he's before this quarterback. I, I, I don't know. He, I, I know. I remember who he was, but yeah, he couldn't. Yeah. He couldn't be any worse than uh the one that just. Yeah, so that's why got drafted I have, by the Vikings. That's why I can't have Sass in front of BC. BC's been tremendous. They had their one loss of the season to Toronto early in the season at Toronto. Um, but Toronto played tremendous that game. They D line got after um Vernon. So I'm gonna have um Sass at three. Um they're the highest scoring team in the league, but they are gonna miss their pivot. Um Wait, th so did this happen to you twice against Dominic Grimes? In that they, game? They showed both plays. I told you that's my one my one game. And I came in I came into that Rudy, I came into I came into that, over here. I came into that game with the up uh, with the utmost, <laughs> the utmost confidence. I had three interceptions early in the season. I'm Ooh, feeling boy. good. I'm talking shit. And on the second, on the second one, I just knew I was gonna catch that pick. I'm like, oh yeah, this is interception number four. And next thing you know, his his elbows on top of my neck, and I say, God damn! Oh, that's funny. And I run back to the sideline. I'm like, damn, just had my head down. But hey, I'm the I'm the vet, man. I get away with stuff sometimes, man. They know what I brought to the team. Um, 
So BC is at number two. Um, Vernon Adams been playing tremendous. Um, so with the receivers, Alexander Hollins, who had mm-hmm. a two hundred yard game against Winnipeg two weeks ago. Um, Justin McKinnis, 6'5", receiver, Canadian, who's coming into his own. He started off slow his career, but he's been balling. Um, so I got BC at two. I don't like their youth in their secondary, but their offense more to make up for it. At number one, the reigning freaking champs, Montreal Alouettes. Their defense has been everywhere. Darnell Sankey's been everywhere, along with Tyrese Beverett. They're two linebackers. They have one of the best safeties in the league who's everywhere also. They got the Lemonator, Lemon Drop at the end, the old Wiley vet who just never seems to get old. His motor keeps going. Um, and they've just been tremendous. Cody Fajardo, along with those receivers, those Canadian receivers, they bring back Reggie White. And they've just been amazing, man. Um Shout out to no to their co their D coordinator Thorpe and Jason Moss. That so, is Nick's power rankings this that week. That is Nick's power rankings. A lot of interruptions from me, and I will probably overplay play that uh video of Nick getting bombed on twice. That's fine. Um, in all fairness, I, I watched a little bit more. I saw him them bomb on some other guys on your team too. With Winnipeg. yeah, he did it the whole year. Um, so we're gonna run into this last part real quick because obviously we are. Um, partnered with bet 99 remember our code is come on 99 all capital letters so make yep. sure it's capital c o m e o n and then number 99 it will be on the bottom of our screen throughout this show um please play responsibly so who are your picks for this week nick we got toronto and saskatchewan you don't have okay. to go through a whole detailed situation Just right. who, are your, who are your picks toronto over sas um the backup quarterback he's gonna feel a lot of pressure coming from toronto defense toronto over sas in sas is a hostile environment one of the best crowds in the league next to winnipeg um it's gonna be a good one but toronto ottawa and winnipeg at winnipeg Winnipeg is not losing three games at home this early. They get back in the winning column. They get back their revenge on Drew Brown coming back into his old team in Winnipeg. Um, Winnipeg finds a way to get a win with their backup quarterback, Chris Trevler. They run the ball. They run the ball. They pound them. And now we have Calgary at Montreal. Calgary pulls off the upset. Montreal finally loses. Even though they're playing at home, I like the way Jake's been playing. Um, they had a chance to beat Montreal last year in Montreal. Um, no team, I don't think any team scored a touchdown that game. Just a whole bunch of field goals. Um, I expect a little bit more fireworks this year, a little bit more offense. But I think Jake has a great game. Dedrick Mills has a great game running the ball, and they come out on top by a field goal. And the final game of the weekend, that's on Sunday, July 7th. You have BC at Hamilton. Um, Give me BC. Um, Last year they had a tremendous game, came down to the end. Um, BC won by three, like 33-30. It was just a great game, fun fun to watch. Um, Bo Levi came back at round at the end of the year from his injury. They split the reps with Schiltz, um, but they just didn't have enough to get it done. They lost by three. BC keep it rolling. Vernon Adams go over there down to Ontario and gets it done again. All right, there you go, folks. Those are Nick's picks: Toronto, Winnipeg, Calgary, and British Columbia. Um, any final words, Nick, before we wrap up this first episode of Come On CFL? Man, this is so much fun to talk about this sport. Man, I love it. I gave. Eight good years to this league, man. It was a great experience, man. I love the way the game is played. I love the fast pace, the high pace. I love you get two downs to get a first down. You really have to come up with your plays. You have to be really special on special teams. You have to be smart on defense. You don't want to bend. You don't you you bend, but you don't break. You try to give up field goals as much as possible. You don't give up touchdowns. That's how you win in this league. Offense, you don't turn the ball over. You get first downs. You keep the drive going. You flip the field. And and that's how you also – and then you score touchdowns. You find a way to score touchdowns. But this week, what I really want to go in on is what everybody's been talking about. The Montreal Alouettes, they do this thing, and they do it really freaking well. 
So usually in the second and long situations, they throw it the ball short of the first. They throw the ball right behind the line of scrimmage and to their receiver, and he has to kick the ball just past one yard past the line of scrimmage or just past the line of scrimmage. And then you could pick it up. The person who kicks it could pick it up, and it's called an onside kick. As long as it's go one yard, you get a new, a fresh set of downs, and it's first down all over again. The world, the social media is in shambles about this play. They went into the rule, CFL rule committee, went to the offseason, and they, they said, should we ban the play? CFL say, heck no, let this play go. This is a part of our league. It's not Bush League. And people will say, oh, this is Bush League because, like, people from other sports like the NFL or other fans of other leagues, NFL, this is Bush League. But the NFL is the same league that has had people lined up five yards across each other like freaking pawns on kickoffs, and, and that's going to be their special teams this year. No, this is the game is called football, and they have a chance where you could kick the ball a yard, and as long as you're behind it, you you could kick if you get an onside recovery, and you and the downs go on. And the CFL is smart because you only get two downs on offense. But what makes it you know good is when a team gets you in second and fifteen. What do you do, Rudy? You drop back in your zone, and you don't let the team get a first down. You just wrap up the tackle, nothing deep. Keep everything in front of you. What do I do? Yeah, in the NFL, I blitz um, sometimes, <laughs> but most teams. I like the. I'm a blitzer. I, I, hate, I hate. I hate prevent off. Prevent, second and but fifteen. In the CFL, CFL, I'd back off because it's it's. There's only one more down. But. Second and fifteen. Second and twenty. Teams are yeah. backing up. Cover yeah. four. You know. You know. Want you all say? Okay, we're gonna throw the ball right at the line of scrimmage to this guy named our running back who does it every time. So second and long. If you see just you see um. Just run and tweet around the line of scrimmage or in the backfield. Know that they're probably going to throw it out to him and he's going to kick the ball. So you know what that does? That makes defenses have to come up on second and 20 and play regular defense. And that keeps the offense, you know, have more of a chance to get a first down. What do we want to see? We want to see more offense. We want to see the offense on the field more and more offense. Except for Rudy, guys. He doesn't want to see that. He wants to see defense pummel, pummel the offense. But we want to see more offense. No, so I, like, I, I like football being football and men being men and hitting being okay, hitting. Okay, we do not, that. They do that powder, in the CFL. Not powder, not powder puff. They do that in the CFL. They hit over there. So that brings the defense down. and gives the offense the opportunity to get a first down in different ways. Or, you know, if you bring your defense down because you're anticipating it, now we can throw all the other routes that we couldn't throw on a usual second and 10 or second and 15. It's a great rule for the league. Every league has their own little nuances that make their league special. This makes the CFL special. It's fun. It gets the people going. People are talking about it. Montreal keeps getting first down. And if you're that darn, if you're on the opposite end, you should know any team that has Jason Moss, uh, 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 and he's from the Dan, the, the 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 coach Campbell, Rick Campbell, um, coaching coaching damn field, um, tree coaching tree. You know that those people all been doing it since they was in Ottawa, and I played with Moss, and they practice it. It's hard to do. If it was easy to do, every team would do. But they have mastered doing it and getting their office an extra set of downs to continue to drive, and they end up scoring touchdowns on it. And that's the difference between winning games and losing the games sometimes is adapting and finding out how can you beat the system, and they found out how to beat the system. And the other teams on defense, you have to know the opponent that you're going against and line up against it and bring your DBs down or your linebacks have to come down and expect it. Now, if you're playing against BC Lions, Rick Campbell, he will do it too because he's part of Jason Moss. And we did it when we was in Ottawa. Coach Elizondo, he did it. He was the offensive coordinator after after Jason Moss left Ottawa. And and, and, and so if, if you're not playing those teams and you're not expecting it or your defense, then that's just on you for being – not so smart. So get y'all head in the game. Understand the situation. Play football. Love the rule. Adjust to the rule. And go buy it. It's fun. Rudy, put that damn clip up there and show them and show why people are mad about it. What, the one you just described? Yep. You need to find that clip for me. You'll find it. It's easy. It's, it's, it's there. You'll find it. My, what, my, what, my, what, my trick play? What? It's called oh, what would you, what, the what would you CFL... Call that? Onside kick by Montreal. Montreal onside kick. But it's not an onside kick. It's it's a it's like a punt. No, it's like a fake. Punt. It's an onside kick. 
because you're literally kicking the ball and you're behind it and you're able to recover as long as it goes a yard. It doesn't. As long as it goes across the line of scrimmage. Oh, okay. I'm going to say, if I kick it one foot, like that's a, okay. Yeah, okay. which is hard to do. You got to catch the ball. You have to, I've seen people try to do it and end up kicking the ball five yards and the defense recover it and it looks stupid. But okay. Montreal has mastered it. They did it like three times last year and they did it again this year. Well, there's a rule in high school football, actually. I don't know if people know. I mean, there's a lot people, of rules that people a lot of rules that that, 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 see, that's the joke about a lot of coaching in, 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 in all professional, in all sports, is that yeah. most coaches don't actually know the rules that they're supposed to know. It's like their, it's their job. It's yeah. your job to know the rules, and a lot of coaches don't know rules. Yeah, like so, when you, when you, when you, a lot of hell, a lot of players don't know rules. Hell, yeah. I would say most players don't know the rules. Um, because yeah. in high schools in Florida, there's a there's a rule that if you punt the ball, yeah. and it doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage, you can recover it. Mm-hmm. And go and run and run forward and yep. get a first and get we'll get a first down. Most high school players don't have any idea about the heck yeah. the coaches don't know about. Yeah, that. I know about it because I saw it done like mm-hmm. three times. And you know there are some coaches that are better than others. So yep. yep. So the last no thing, else, the last thing I got to say, I'm gonna give out my O Canada O Canada Player of the Week on offense. I'm gonna go to Cody Fajardo. And Vernon Adams, both of them get get the, the. Is it Fajardo or Fajardo? Is he a Spanish one, a Spanish player, or a... I, I know you, Adams, you... Cody Fajardo. I don't say Fajardo. <laughs> I, if I'm wrong, Cody. I don't get, know. I mean, hey, if I, I'm I, wrong, I, Cody, when you get on this show, you correct me because we're definitely gonna have Cody on there. I haven't gotten <laughs> on his bad side yet. Um, <laughs> um, I don't. Know, did I get an interception off him? No, I didn't get none off him. All right, that's cool. It happens sometimes. So Vernon Adams went for 27 for 38, 331 yards and one touchdown, no interceptions. Cody went for 284, um, 33 of 41, one touchdown, one interception. That one interception, I'm going I'm to wipe it off the slate. They were trying to make a big play at the, end, at the end. And then my defensive player, my old Canada, old Canada defensive player of the week goes to Demario Houston who has seven tackles and a game-clinching interception against his former team. I could have gave it to a, another player on defense or two, but I think that's special when you get to get a payback on your former team, especially on the last play when you get to say, call game, like Paul Pierce. I call game. And that's what he did, man. Good for Demario. Good for him getting his uh, get back on Winnipeg. Just know that you got to see them again. So be ready that they're going to come at you next time. All right, folks, that is about to wrap it up. Um, this is our first episode of Come On CFL featuring the one and only three-time Grey Cup champion, Nick Taylor. Hopefully he doesn't offend too many players in Canada, you know, the way uh, – or maybe he does want to. Maybe he wants to become the Charles Barkley of uh, Come On CFL talking Canadian Football League. Yeah, I know um, Chris Jones would never want to get on here with me. Because I probably talk oh, shit about okay. him too much. So, but whatever. Oh, oh, okay. Be a better hey, coach. Man. Be a better coach. Hey, man. Hey, shoot. That's, that's the way. You know what? You When you decide that you want to be a coach of a football team on a professional level, guess what? You get to enjoy the conversation, the commentary, the critique, and the praise. It's like I was telling you, what was it, the other day. I, I don't, you know, the, these older players. Uh, we're having, you know, as we mentioned, we talk about a lot of Caitlin Clark stuff here, and I'm not going to go into it as they've blown this entire yeah, game. Yeah, Vegas we're, we're, that's tomorrow. Out. But Diana Taurasi goes for 19 points, and oh, she's you know, but she didn't really, she didn't shoot the ball well. Oh well, she's 42. Well, if she was 42, see, you can't have the good and not the bad. You can't yeah. you, you can't just get the good with the good. So yeah. if you play great, you can't be oh she had a great game. That's amazing. She's 42, and then okay. Well, if she plays bad, oh, well, she's 42, she's so that's 42. okay. No, you played like you played great or you played like shit. You get them both. So if the coach coached like shit, he gets yep. it. And if he coached well, he gets that too. But that'll do it for well, us. Again, well, uh, you had one more thing that you wanted to say? Nope. Next week probably nope. won't be as long because Rudy is not going to let me talk about Winnipeg next week. Yeah, we, we're going we're gonna to smooth out this power rankings where it's a nonstop Winnipeg love fest. I get it. He won two rings there. He had his, the greatest years of his life at Win- in Winnipeg. Um, 
you know. I am not but, biased. Oh, Lord have mercy. It's okay. Just to, the same way Mark Messier wasn't biased towards the Edmonton Oilers in the in the Stanley Club final against uh, the Florida, Florida Panthers on ESPN as he's literally cheerleading for Edmonton. Like I am every, Diane, every, I am every, Diana Taurasi. Every Canadian every Canadian was cheering for Edmonton against the Panthers. We all know it. I watch these guys spitting chiclets on Instagram. Um I don't even know. I don't know their names. I know the guy Biz because he's on ESPN, which I, I think he's great. You know, he went from jumping on the Panthers bandwagon to his three three and he's all he's wearing Edmonton t shirts yeah. and he's in the in, in the owner's box. And yeah. You know, yeah. there's like another guy from that show who's going down to the ice in, in Florida and, and trying to be funny because he's known Matthew Kachuk's family for their entire lives, but he's clearly cheering for Edmonton. Like, we, 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 look, all the hockey players are Canadian. <laughs> so okay. for the most part, but right. yeah, man, uh, Florida Panthers still got y'all. We're Florida boys, South Florida boys. Hey, Florida Panthers, the best hockey in the world is played in Florida. All right. Mind you, they're all Canadians playing down here, but we'll <laughs> it's playing it. in Florida. All right, that'll do it for us. Come on, CFL. Remember, we will have that code. It's come on 99, all caps. We will see you next week.